Hi, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates, and I am at a conference in Chicago. Uh, one of the main reasons I came was I wanted to see one of my heroes, John Bradshaw, speak uh, on the subject of shame, among other things. And unfortunately, he's ill and he couldn't uh, be here. So uh, the star of the uh, conference thus far, uh, which is about Eastern thought being blended with Western psychological thought, the star of the conference hasn't been John Bradshaw, it's been Buddha, of all people. Um, I'm not Buddhist, but uh, I think they, they do have some interesting concepts to offer. And uh, in the first uh, speaking session yesterday morning, uh, there was something covered that sort of jumped out at me, and uh, it gave me the topic uh, for a blog. So I'm going to do like I did last week. I'm just going to read the blog and then comment as I go. And this week's blog is called Invite Your Pain to Tea, which I love that title. And I'm going to start with a quote from the great 13th century Persian poet Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. I think I had that this morning. <laughs> Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain all of them. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. In our culture, we tend to only want to feel the good feelings and the poet is saying it's all good which I've been saying for a long time on this this blog and on my videos that uh, pain is our instructor and our teacher and we need to embrace all of our pain okay so I'm gonna read I am in Chicago for a conference as I compose my weekly blog this week. I'm learning how to say some things that I've been saying forever in a different and hopefully more eloquent way. When the first speaker made reference to the ancient Buddhist tradition of inviting one's pain to tea, I knew right away I had the subject of this week's blog. My clients and my readers know that I'm constantly saying unpopular things like pain is good. The pain of your marriage is a wonderful gift. And embrace and cooperate with the pain of your wounded inner child. Inviting your pain to tea is exactly what I'm talking about when I say those things. Because when I stress the importance of learning and feeling and taking care of a vital business, it's, it's just that. It's, it's inviting your pain in and feeling it and not numbing out. In researching this tradition, I came across a really remarkable blog post that I wanted to share. It's by a woman named Tara Brach, B-R-A-C-H, and it's entitled inviting Mara to tea. I guess, uh, I won't go into some long Buddhist story, but I guess Mara represents a character uh, that is bad news, um, pain, difficulty, uh, is the symbolism of Mara. So here's part of that blog posting. When Mara, or your inevitable pain and trouble, visits, um, by accepting these experiences with warmth the warmth of compassion, we can offer them tea rather than fearfully driving them away. 
Seeing what is true, we hold what is seen with kindness. So much of therapy is about learning how to love yourself and accept yourself. And when you have a good therapist and they understand you and they listen to you, they teach you to not shame yourself. They teach you to be gracious and forgiving and that's what uh, the blog author here is discussing with, with kindness and compassion. We express such wakefulness of heart each time we recognize and embrace our hurts and our fears. Our habit of being a fair-weather friend to ourselves, of pushing away or ignoring whatever darkness we can, is very deeply entrenched. I love that, that uh, we are fair-weather friends to our very selves. And who should we be wonderful uh, accepting loving friends with if it's not with ourselves. So, our habit of being a fair weather friend to ourselves or pushing away or ignoring whatever darkness we can is deeply entrenched. But just as a relationship with a good friend is marked by understanding and compassion, we can learn to bring these same qualities to our own inner life. And he, uh, she quoted uh, a guy named Pema Charad, I, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> says that uh, through spiritual practice, we are learning to make friends with ourselves, uh, our life, and at the most profound levels possible. We bef befriend ourselves uh, when rather than resisting our experience, we open our hearts and willingly invite the pain in, in, of our darkest hour to tea. So I, I know that uh, some of my guys in my group might uh, razz me for uh, talking about having tea and inviting people to tea, but the metaphor of inviting them to tea is to, to invite them to a warm, safe place. Uh, where there's acceptance and where there's not judgment, where things can be discussed and sorted through and learned from, and you can gain from that. So I really love that. When we push away our pain, we are really pushing away an opportunity to know and to heal ourselves. Recovery and therapy are all about learning how to befriend our innermost selves. A huge part of the healing power of therapy is built upon genuine compassion, acceptance, and kindness. As we invite our pain and we invite our therapist to tea, we learn how to be gracious and nurturing and forgiving with ourselves. Learn to welcome all of you, um, even the dark thought the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them all in. Um, laughing because you know they're not going to overwhelm you, that your pain won't uh, ruin you and destroy you. Have a confidence that you can deal with your pain, learn from your pain, and it's all good. So be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Rumi was an expert on modern day therapy, even though he's from the 13th century. And he was an expert on emotional growth. How cool is that? Meet them at the door laughing. You know, come on in. We're going to have a party in here. We're going to have some tea. Um, it's all good. Uh, we learn, uh, we can learn to become loving and nurturing and championing, championing, that's hard to say, best friends to ourselves. Uh, and then if we can do that, if we can be a champion and a best friend and a loving, nurturing friend to ourselves, you know what? The world is your oyster. Um, the world is not a scary place. It's, it's. Uh, more friendly and more safe than you think 
if you can be those things for yourself. So learn from whatever pain comes your way. As a therapist uh, and as a very flawed human being, uh, it has been my observation that most of the pain that comes our way is not bad luck. It's (laughs) self-inflicted. It is with me. And it has been with most of the people I've worked with through the years. The pain is an invitation and it's an opportunity to get to know the real truth about ourselves. Good therapy is about knowing the truth about yourself, even if that truth is difficult to swallow. Seeing what is true, we hold what is seen with kindness. We hold what is seen with graciousness and forgiveness. The pain from your marriage is especially meant to be instructive and healing for you. Don't run from it. Dig in. Open up. Open up your heart. Uh, Seek first to understand your spouse and invite your teacher slash combatant combatant slash lover slash spouse for a safe, mellow, healing spot of tea um, with, it, with a good therapist in the room to help you out. If your heart is right, then your journey will ultimately be very rich and very rewarding. Well, I, can, I can guarantee you that you'll be, it'll also be quite bumpy at times. So, um, this is where Recovery work and therapy intersect with some ancient uh, Eastern traditions where the wisdom of Rumi and uh, even of Buddha say, um, don't run from yourself, don't run from your pain, don't uh, even run from your marriage, Um, it's all good. And... uh, You'll be a better man, you'll be a better woman, and you'll be more fulfilled and and happier if uh, you dig in and really learn and and really figure out who you are and where you came from and why the problems you're having happen to you. So invite your pain to tea and bring your spouse and bring your therapist and get some business done on an emotional level. So, well, that's all I had for you uh, this week. Um, uh, Again, I'm Mark Smith at FamilyTreeCounseling.com. Remember my e-books that I have for sale on abandonment, and I'm writing one currently on the subject of shame. And there's uh, also e-books on affair recovery, uh, men's issues called A Punch in the Mouth from a Friend, uh, a lot of wives would like to punch punch their husbands in the mouth. Uh, i got to tell you, the past five years, um, as I've worked uh, around affair issues uh, on four different occasions, four different couples, a woman's reached over and popped a guy right in the snoot. <laughs> Didn't see it coming any time, and uh, I don't, I don't uh, think that's a good thing. But uh, uh, while we're talking about that on a psychological level, um, so... Uh, and then there's, there's also a book about uh, learning from your marriage and the pain of your marriage. And there's also a book that you can get for free that's sort of a uh, distillation of all those. I uh, call it the basics, and it covers all those things. So uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.